Okay, let's talk. Let's, okay. Okay. Let's start right here. Go ahead. Okay. Let's get your name, sir. Uh, Jerry Zuckerman. And you're with? Uh, Hackensack Meridian Health. Okay. Uh, obviously, we've been through this type of infectious disease scenario before. How does this differ from stuff you've seen in the past? So I think this differs in that it's going to be possibly a larger number of people infected. In the past, the infections that we've had have been much more limited. Uh, today, we're all susceptible to uh, coronavirus, even though it acts and seems like it acts like influenza, and we get that every year. Um, there'll be that many more people who may be infected by it. Okay. Um, I'd like to know, the, uh, the FDA approved yesterday for both New York City and New York State to do their own testing. Um, where are we in that in, in, in New Jersey? Is there an application in for that or um, so that they can get a lot faster and not have to rely on, on CDC? Okay. Do we have you step forward, sir? Yes, so my name is uh, David Perlin. I'm at the Hackensack Meridian Health. I'm the Sorry. Chief Scientific Officer for the Center for Discovery and Innovation. Uh, well, we developed a molecular test based on uh, CDC, uh, based on the CDC guidelines and, uh, uh, and specifications. Uh, this is this would be a, a, um, an in-house test that we use. So we're going to be applying for emergency use authorization from the from the FDA in order to use this test, uh, and we're hoping to have it uh, ready to go for our network uh, within within the week. Um, currently, um, the uh, the health department uh, labs and Jersey are, are authorized to test, uh, and so this is uh, this this is um, certainly a, a plus because that way we can send samples to uh, to the health department and then to CDC for final uh, validation. Did not the CDC say this week that the, obviously the first batch of tests they sent out didn't work? Did they not say that they want every state to start testing by the end of this coming week? Is that possible? Uh, they, they, as long as as long as the states have uh, have the CDC test, which has been uh, um, uh, reformulated uh, and, and sent out to the to the health departments, they should be able to do that. Yes. Yeah. New Jersey Department of Health said just last night that the the one test that they suspected came back negative. Uh, in all your systems, are there any other tests currently pending? Individuals. Yes. Uh, no. 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 We, we have no. one, one person at one of our hospitals that uh, the test is pending and we expect the result back later today. Can you give us a little background, uh, gender, age, where have they been, a little yeah, profile yeah. please? Yeah. I mean, non-personal non identifiable, but it's important to know from where the no. person is for the public. No. But, well, no. Wh why not? I mean, it's this is important for people yeah. to know. HIPAA violation. No, End no, no. Questions. We're not asking for Someone any. Someone else, please? We're not asking for a name or, okay. where, or their address or anything. Sir, can you give us a profile? We're hey, done. Hey, hey, we're done. Excuse it's me. It's a HIPAA violation. You do what you. We're done. No, like Sh Actually, you got to know the rules. We're actually. done. No, no. Okay. okay. Know the rules. Everyone, we're going to continue on the tour. Okay. <laughs> I just, we still need to it's talk. like a first okay. for a member of one, the media. Go right to, ahead. Okay, no. sir. Uh, so excuse me. I'm going to go on for another question. No. If you don't want to answer okay. the question, that's fine. It can't be in that area. Okay. Yes. Okay, so yeah, am, ahead, my, my other question. Okay. No, no, let this young lady. Yeah. Sorry, and then you'll go, we'll come Excuse back. Me. You do your job. Okay, let guys. Me do mine. Guys, I am doing, I'm doing both. Okay, guys. Thank you. Okay, guys. 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 Yeah. Okay. I, you know what, sir? I think we're done. Okay, we're done, sir. We're done. Let's. Congressman, can I? Uh... Wait, why don't we all hold for one second? Right. Okay. okay. Thank you. One second. Thank okay. You. Yes. Go ahead. The coronavirus mimics that of a common cold. How soon after people have signs of a sickness or a cold should they see a doctor? Where are you from? Sorry. Tap and tap and tap. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, I think the thing that folks are going to need to treat, and it's actually one of the challenges we have right now, is that um, the CDC recommendations are actually right now pretty broad. Uh, and it's one of the reasons that the testing uh, opportunities that we have right now are going to be very helpful. I think the biggest thing for folks right now is you d if you're mildly ill, you don't need to come to the emergency department. That's probably the most important thing. Uh, to understand. There's a hotline at the New Jersey State Department of Health. Uh, you can call your primary care physician. Uh, far better to start with that than to just kind of show up at the ED. For those folks who are actually really sick, uh, once in the ED we really hope that with the change in testing uh, availability and the ability to turn it over quickly and locally, uh, that we'll be able to screen those folks, reassure them, and get them home hopefully. Can we get your name? And, uh, uh, Dr. Dan Varga from Hackensack Meridian. Right, so I have a, okay, yeah. I have another question, unless somebody else yep. has another question. Please. You know, it, it's uh, one of the things I was thinking about was it's been 18 years since 9-11, and uh, 
chemical and biological uh, uh, concerns well, have been big and a lot of money has been funded for that. Yet, I, not necessarily the people here, standing here, but I keep hearing talk about we're not prepared. How is it possible that we cannot be prepared for the worst after 18 years and billions of dollars in funding for exactly this potential problem? Well, I think more importantly to talk about what we are doing to be prepared and where we are prepared. So, you know, and part of, can I just say that part of what we talked about today, which was, you know, reassuring to me as somebody who's not a medical doctor, but someone who's very concerned about this and concerned for all of our families is, where are we in the preparation process? And the fact that we're working on a test and, and we're gonna have a rapid test, I hope, in the next day or two, that everybody can use, all the hospitals can use to me, is exactly the kind of cooperative work we want happening among our medical community. And secondly, the thing we talked about today in our session was making sure that there is strong cooperation. And where I, what I one of the great positive outcomes of this meeting to me was that a, there's going to be a daily call and conversations, making sure that there's coordination between all of our hospitals, especially in my part of, uh, of New Jersey, northern New Jersey. And just so you know, here is everyone from Atlantic Health, which is Hackensack and Newton, to Valley Hospital, to Newbridge, to Hackensack, and I hope I'll and Holy Name Medical Center. You, you have all the hospitals here that, uh, that people could be walking into. Um, if, if they're at that where they talk to their doctors and consult with their doctors and believe they need to go into a hospital to make sure they get the care that they need, that everyone is coordinated in terms of beds, supplies, and what I was interested in learning today also was not just ensuring that there's strong coordination, which is key, but what exactly do our hospitals need? What do our doctors need? What do our nurses need? And uh, we're going to be voting this week on uh, emergency supplemental in the Congress to make sure that our country and ev has all the supplies it needs. And, and what I was listening for today is exactly what, what do you need, making sure that I can do my job in Washington uh, to that end. And I'm so grateful for the response today from all of our doctors and all of our nurses and all of our clinicians and executives of hospitals who are going to be working closely together to ensure that we are prepared for this, that the beds are there, that the supplies are there, and that's what's gonna be key. And also, the other big piece of this is, and I asked the media for the help here, to make sure that we actually communicate to people exactly what needs to happen if you're not feeling well and exactly what right and what our what do our first responders need to know what do our teachers need to know in all of our schools and and our in our nursing homes this is key that we get the information out there and that people if this if this spreads that people have the information they need and and to me that's also what's a critical step that we took here today Congressman, Last question. I, Congressman, yeah. I, know, yes, I know you have children, and uh, yes, sir. I know that most schools across the state are in the precautionary mode, the sanitizing and all that stuff. What, what would you like to see the, the schools do if, in fact, it actually comes? And it's Because, obviously, in school, these kids spread stuff like crazy. Okay. You know, well, obviously, that's concerning, and I think part of what we talked about today, and I'm going to turn it over to people who handle infectious disease, but, but part of this, what I heard today, was make sure that we're constantly washing our hands, right, right? Or, and, right? And, not, and make sure our kids aren't touching their face, right, as, as best as we can. I've got kids, I understand that that's a big ask, um, but, 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 right, and, and go If your ahead. child yeah. is sick, stay home. Right, if your child's sick, stay home. Stay home. Right. Anybody else want to add to that? If you've got kids, we'll um, to the... Yeah, I can add, uh, Dr. Surd Sugger, Chief Infectious Disease, Holy Name Medical Center. Uh, what we discussed in the room earlier was the idea that if the community transmission uh, reached such a rate where uh, local communities had very high incidence of disease, then schools should have a plan of being able to educate children and keeping them home, we call self-quarantine. So I, we had discussed earlier that having things like uh, in place, like being able to work from home, prescription medication, some extra food, and understanding that you know making plans in place now may never come to fruition, but having plans in place now, if need be, uh, keeping children home, self-quarantine until the incidence of the disease passes the community. So that's real. That's really important, right? To make sure that everyone has is thinking ahead. And if there's a big, you know, and what I also heard was that one of the big gaps is information of knowing if someone has it, uh, right? Has the virus, and the fact that Hack Attack is working on this, and hopefully we'll get to an answer, and is willing to then work with all the hospitals so they also can share in this technology um, if they get a test. Because I think it's going to be critical. One of the big gaps we're hearing is what's critical is actually. Get it, knowing if somebody has the virus. Right now, it's process of elimination. They test for everything else and say, okay, you don't test positive for anything else, that must be this, versus actually having a test so you can walk in and know. And I think that's going to be key in the next week. 
Uh, just a scientific question, question, if possible. Sure. We're done. We're done. Okay. We're done.